Good morning. <laughs> You're very welcome to Awaken the Heart. My name is Sarah St. Clair, and I have a very special guest with me again this morning, a complete delight, Mystic David Hoffmeister. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to be here. It's great to see all the smiling faces in the morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's the tribe. <laughs> it's the tribe. It's the tribe. Mm. And it's very international. If this is your first time joining us, either on Periscope via David or on LM Virtual or on Zoom, you're very, very welcome. Um, livingmiracles.org is our host and LM Virtual is the show base which we use just to share this really good news that all is well. Yeah, and so many of the people who join us come from different pathways and a lot also come from A Course in Miracles. But you're just very welcome because this experience is for everybody. So this show is called Awake in the Heart. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we joined a lot yesterday and then we went into questions from the audience um, as well because this is interactive if it's your first time joining us on Zoom. And we may open it up for questions. Um, but you had you had just been sharing with me that you were going to go see a movie. And I wondered if you wanted to share a little bit about that experience. Yeah, it was a very profound experience. Um, occasionally they'll come out with a, another uh, Jesus movie. And this one was called Risen. And uh, yeah, I, I, I had watched the trailer and I noticed that this particular movie was more starting around, right around the, the crucifixion, really close, starting at the beginning, right at the very end of Jesus' life, literally on the, hanging on the cross, and then taking it through to all of the, the story that we know about from some of the other movies, that the Sanhedrin were, were so concerned that uh, Jesus' followers would come and take the body, mm. and uh, then would go and claim that he's risen and they'd have a bigger problem than they had. Mm. Uh, they thought when he was alive, they thought, oh my God, it'll, it will grow just followers and legend and there'll be more mm. upheaval. And so this one has Pilate and um, it has a, a man that works for Pilate and then his assistant. And it basically uh, reminded me a little bit of that um, Zero Dark Thirty when it's with Jessica Chastain where they're trying to you know, kill uh, Osama bin Laden, but then the body, of, right. you know, identify the body. Well, this was a body, a manhunt for a, a decaying body. And uh, and yet, in the context of it was looking for Jesus. Mm. And so this man was, uh, you know, he and um, Pilate thought that was all this Messiah stuff was, this, you know, Jewish nonsense. and But they knew there was a lot of... Uh, unrest and I think uh, the Emperor was coming to visit so Pilate wanted things smoothed out and Looking everything mm. yeah, and so he kept putting pressure and it's a very well told well made story another one uh, you know Nikita was with me and and Francis and Lisa but and Nikita had some tears and it was it was very powerful and very impactful and especially the point the search goes on and on and on and he he's looking for any kind of a lead, and then he comes across Mary Magdala. Mm. So the presence of Mary Magdala um, is quite strong in this, and he comes to her, and he's got all these questions, and she's basically tells him straight to his face, uh, this Roman man that's uh, given the task to find the body of Jesus. Um, he was given the task to, you know, have a couple of men watch over the tomb, and so. Right. You know he's got to follow through for his responsibilities, but but basically he questions her, and and at some point she just looks him straight in the eye and just says, "You're, you're looking in the wrong direction," which was quite powerful when we know the whole context of of trying to find solutions in the world or trying to make sense of things. And uh, this Roman man, he's he's doing the best he can, um, but deep down. We know that he even wants to retire outside of Rome and have a family and have a quiet life where there's no death. And so he's got an incentive mm. way down underneath all of this thing of being a Roman and, and you know, kind of being in charge of keeping the, the Jews in, in hand and, and 
all of his job, but he wants that deep down. And then at some point he's he's led uh, to the apostles, and there's you know, Mary Magdalene and the apostles in the upper room, and goes in and the, but the last thing he thought he would see mm. actually was Jesus. And so just the look on his face, he is just stunned and staggered, because he was right there looking at him, the dead Jesus on the cross, actually part of Mm. Of uh, putting the final spear in, and so he has this image in his mind of the dead Jesus, and then when he sees this smiling, f friendly, gentle, loving Jesus, it just you know the dead don't <laughs> don't come back. He just has a look almost like he's seeing a vision or an image, yeah. or you know, it, it's just staggering to him. And then that was a good point because there's a lot of people in the world that have their doubts about the spiritual journey and, and doubts about Jesus and doubts about eternal life mm -hmm. and considering the heaviness of the ego's uh, you know dark perception and darkened glass so I think it has a tremendous transfer value and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that and I feel like there's a lot of good teaching movies but the best movies are when you can give yourself over to go into an experience, a direct experience, mm. and feel that deep reverence and presence. And so, um, yeah, it's very good. And even the preview, I'd already seen on uh, on uh, the internet of, a, I think, a Mexican movie that's coming out, or uh, I saw it maybe I w when I was in Mexico, the preview, but it's about the going to the other end of the spectrum, uh, like a seven-year-old Jesus. Right. And going and emphasizing that part, mm. and I, I bet it was quite amazing, even mm. even as a seven-year-old. Uh, we know now with the the crystal children and the indigos mm. how that can be quite striking, especially for parents of indigos and crystals. But for Jesus at seven, so that's another uh, one that's coming around. So we live in an interesting <laughs> time of um, amazing tools, as well as our Movie Watcher's Guide, there's some ones that just keep rolling out, and ever since about 2014 we've been in a little bit of a drought for mm. like spectacular movies, mm. back when we had our movie yes. fest, but it's starting to crank up again. Uh, I'm like, whoa, here we go. <laughs> it's all very biblical right <laughs> it's now, It's very too. biblical, yeah. yes, and even the new book that's coming yeah. out, The Mystical Teachings of Jesus, we talked about that yesterday, and then I go to see that movie, and it's swirling that that Christ energy in a strong way of mm. I am calling you out of the world, be of good cheer. Uh, you know, it's like woo, it's very strong. The, you can't help but feel this ancient song feeling coming in everywhere because that's what our call is for and everyone just feels like they're joining us in it, like it's a rolling back the rock kind mm -hmm. of time. and. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, everybody's in it, and I feel like everyone who joins us here also, that's their call to go deeper and in presence and into the unknown. Yeah. You know, just to leave touch with, with what's been in their awareness of what seems like their daily lives and cut from that for a moment and just step into this space. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think as you perceive yourself as a human being in this world, you don't really see from the surface that you're whole surface of consciousness is resting on this unconscious belief system that that you're a body, that you're a man or a woman, you have masculine or feminine traits, that you have skills and abilities, that you have a cultural background and upbringing and various physical traits and DNA and genetics. All of that's a projection of an unconscious belief system. And so you might say that that that's really what everybody is praying for every day in their hearts, even if they don't know what the prayer is. They're like, I, I need a wake-up call, like an in inception, I need a kick, I need, uh, yesterday was our leap year show, right. and, and we're, we're getting into that leap. I need something that's going to trigger me, that's going to activate me from the inside, that's going to light me up. Uh, very much like when you go to hear... Uh, Maybe the Mormon Tabernacle Choir or a, a great gospel singer and the gospel singer or gospel choir is just letting it rip and some of these churches everybody's swaying. The energy of love gets activated or out there, uh, Alexa, I know you're out there, Michael Beckwith and, and all those, you know, like that kind of energy 
on a daily basis. I mean, really, really fired up and lit up. Because the, the rolling away the stone thing, the, the, the two men, the soldiers that were left there, they, they had been up for two days and they're like, oh please, don't forget us. And they, they fell asleep and, and they were drinking and um, they didn't know what happened. They, finally we know that there was this blazing light and it was frightening to them. And uh, the ropes, they had these ropes there. The seals were burst. The ropes were not cut. The ropes were burst. And this big stone, it took seven Romans just to move it just over the top, over the, the sepulcher. Mm, I always like that word. word. My favorite <laughs> word. To roll this big stone over the sepulcher. This, the rock is way across, maybe 15 feet a, away from where it was. And, and it's just inexplicable circumstances. And really, when you think you're a human in a body and you, you're dealing with a daily life of, of minutes and hours and, and days and weeks and months and years, mm -hmm. that, that you, you have been so accustomed to a lie, so accustomed to a, a substitute reality or a substitute identity, it's become so ingrained, so familiar, that you really need a jump start, you need uh, a kick start, you do need miracles. The, the only way to really light up is going to be through the miracles. And that's that's the only thing that's going to do it. So, in movies like this, even though it's just historical events, so to speak, it's uh, they are very applicable. And And then toward the end of the movie, you know, with Jesus appearing the second time, um, when they're when they're out fishing and waiting for him, you know, and he's happily kind of walking along on the shore and telling him to throw their net over to the right side because they didn't get any fish and mm. they got all this fish. But then that's the smiles, the touches, the gaze uh, of of what of was before a carcass of a man. Um, it's quite amazing, and that's just the symbol of the resurrection in the mind. Again, we're not trying to to say, you know, you have to have all these supernatural experiences. I would say miracles are natural and even revelation is extremely natural. But in this world it's very supernatural and it's very rare. But everyone is called to light up with with this Christ identity that, that is who we are. And now we, we have tools like these movies are spectacular. We have got so many tools and, and even this book <coughs> yeah. on the way uh, you know, it's the mystical teachings of Jesus. of Jesus. You know, basically I got from Jesus at some point, I was told to put together this book and I was given a series of questions and then I was told that I would be able to go to the Bible and I would be directed to which passages from the Bible that address these questions and then I would go to the Course in Miracles and I would be given passages that would even further clarify. So. This book for the early students was highly impactful, and it was impactful for me because for most of us watching here and most of us together, we have grown up in a Judeo-Christian world, and the Bible has been a huge impact, a huge influence. Even if the ego has hijacked a lot of the teachings and thrown in a lot of punishment, penance, suffering, sacrifice, you know, it's, it's spiced it up made a real spicy story for to turn it. It's like the ego is the ultimate spin doctor. Talk about political spin mm. doctors. It did a spin doctor thing on the Bible. But there's still some really core elements in there. So this really, I would read this book and then I would be all fired up and I would just go out on the road and believe it or not, I was invited into churches and meet met people all along the way. Some Christians different walks of life, but a lot of Christians, and I could speak their language because I was so immersed in the in the presence of, of Christ and the the teachings, and also all the parables were, were brought right. to the forefront. So to me that was very important, and um, my gosh, you'd sometimes, you would think I was a preacher going around by the way it would come out of me. I, I occasionally would give public talks, but a lot of times it was mostly one-on-one. -on -one. With people. We were always uplifted. We were always doing the road to Emmaus where mm. Christ was with us and and we were our eyes were lighting up with this and 
So, um, yeah, I, I look forward to uh, having everybody be able to, to partake, if you haven't yet, in, in this kind of a book, because it's amazing. Yeah, I think it is. I think you're talking about having access to speaking and meeting with everyone from something that is so um, inherent in the basic culture we're coming from. It's a way of describing even what you're experiencing using words and phrases that are familiar to them and just being able to just really just share the really good news. I always think I've got we've got really good news to share. You yeah. know, there's a there's a spring in my heart and it's my own joy that I'm sharing. So yeah, there's no yeah. teaching of another. There's just the, it includes everyone. And that's what I've always loved about the teachings of Jesus. It was for everyone. Yeah. Everyone was welcome. Yeah. Into it. yeah. Yeah. And of course, and Sarah, you're from Ireland. And, and of course, the, the history of the Protestants and the Catholics. And there's a lot of spin doctoring going on uh, to the original Gospels. But, but there's such a draw to the presence of love that's, mm. that's behind those Gospels. And what I like about this was even uh, a child, an adolescence, could pick this book up and and go into the uh, table of contents and get drawn in because Jesus gave me the questions and then he gave me the content of the answers. Mm. That was mind-altering for me, mind-blowing uh, to go through that, uh, the actual answers. But the questions, you know, it's I don't know, I'm into practicality. I'm just not into theology and uh, a bunch of religion and theology. I'm into experience and practicality. So some of the questions starts off, who is Jesus Christ? If I was picking up a book and I had no idea of who is Jesus Christ, there's the question, and then the answer is amazing. Uh, what is my relationship to you, mm -hmm. to Jesus? Speak on the parable of the prodigal son. We mo Most of us know about the parable of the prodigal son because it's so familiar in our culture, but what did it really mean? What is the full impact of that? What does the Bible have to say and what does the Course have to say? Because the Course actually mentions the, the parable of the prodigal son briefly. Uh, not It doesn't go into detail, but it's referred to. Mm. Please speak about creation and the fall of man. How is fear abolished? Is distorted perceiving lack of vision the main problem? And it goes on and asks about the golden rule, what is the devil, speak on the Beatitudes, what is a miracle, speak on charity, does God require any sacrifice? Always a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> what is the meaning of the crucifixion? I mean, this goes on, that's one page and there's two, three, what do all the watch parables mean? Some of you know the Bible about that, please speak of trust. So it's like three pages here of questions and then the, the book launches into it. Mm. I just found that highly practical in my life. I was raised in the Judeo-Christian tradition. Um, I know Sarah was mm -hmm. as well. I was raised in a Protestant um, denomination called United Church of Christ. It never really, I never really lit up in it. But I, when I came much later in my life, like into my mid and late twenties, uh, particularly the late twenties, I just, it just lit up like almost like a born-again experience that they talk about, but not just professing a name in Jesus. I mean, from my heart, it just really lit up. Mm. So this was like uh, igniting. And I feel like, too, to teach is to demonstrate, so we all have to be lit up in the Spirit. We have to be lit up in joy and, and passion and happiness. And that state of mind, our attitude does the teaching. It's not so much the words. The words have to line up with our attitude because if we just go out and try to give lectures on the gospel, you know, it's like everybody's like, oh please, how many centuries do we have to listen to another lecture on the gospel? But if you're happy and you're joyful, then that that does all your teaching. And there may be words or there just may be a lot of laughter and hugs. Yeah, it, it really gets to the point where there's... Um, a complete transfer of the experience like when during the time where I had been uh, supporting with this book and gathering bits of it together in, in one of the editions um, I had my beautiful Jehovah Witness friends call again at the door and at this time I was living in the peace house but on my own there wasn't anyone around mm -hmm. they came in and they started sharing about like some of the very controversial uh, passages about the goats versus the sheep mm -hmm. and 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 gay or not or different things and I had this experience where I was so happy and so in love that I could absolutely be in total agreement with absolutely everything that was being said and yet somehow was saying 
it was it was opening it right up. I don't know what it was, yeah. but it was the most. They just <laughs> they were just smiling with me, and there was just this joy and love, and there was nothing left but the joy and the love, yeah. and all of the text fell away. Yeah. There was just joy and love that yeah. was left. Yeah, yeah. Words are so crude. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're helpful to us for a while, but but then you get into this rapture kind of experience of love and joy and connection, and and you really feel the sameness, like we're all the same. So it doesn't really matter what they're talking about. They could be talking about anything, and there's such love that you you join with the truth in them mm. and it goes way beyond the body way beyond the words and it's it's the most spectacular experience there could ever be and to me that's what everybody is is calling for they're praying for that whether they are even conscious of what mm. they're praying for they just want to feel the love mm. and the connection and i love i've had so many experiences with uh, jehovah's mormon mm. missionaries you know i could feel the love and, and connect right with their heart and we just rejoice together and there was no like trying to split hairs over mm. passages from the Bible or theology. The, the love just swept swept us away. Mm. It, it feels to me a little bit like you, the movie you're describing which I haven't seen yet, Risen. Nikita described a little bit to me too and all I could feel was that even if you're on a manhunt, even if you're seeking vengeance and death but you're looking for Jesus, you're yeah. being so supported in that, in finding yeah. Jesus, in finding this experience, like nothing, it doesn't matter what drew you out to begin this quest of such, or this, this opening up, like everything can be utilized. Yeah. Nothing's in the way, it can be all joined with, and from the description yeah. you gave, it's like, apostles, everyone's like, I will help you find him, rather than I will keep him hidden from you because of your, your motivation, yeah. I will help you truly find him. Yeah. Yeah, one of the apostles, when he first came to the apostles, was so happy. It reminds me of some of the people in our community. He was so happy and smiling, and then and he was getting grilled. The, this, the Roman was grilling him, grilling him, uh, like, if you, you know what, the, have you been to a crucifixion? And he was like, no, I haven't. And he's still smiling, his curly hair, and he said, well, the Roman's like, well, let me tell you about it. And he goes into great, gruesome detail about it, and, and then... Uh, says, you probably weren't there because you probably ran away, so you didn't have to be near such a thing. But uh, still, the, he says, I want to know the truth of what what happened. You know, were there followers, you know, taking the body and this and this, and, and uh, where is that body? The Roman is very determined to find this body, and finally, you see this apostle just get the biggest smile. I said, and you'll set me free if I tell you the truth? And the Brahmin's like, yes. Mm. So he says, everywhere! <laughs> where, where is Jesus? Everywhere! And he goes running out the door. <laughs> because he's been told by the Roman, tell me the truth and I'll set you free. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, everywhere! And he's happier than ever. He's zooming out the door into the light. And very striking. Well, later on, um, you know, the, the Roman is still, now he's seen Jesus, he's questioning, still it's hard to believe, but he's, the apostles are trying to say what they've witnessed around Jesus, miracles and healing of the sick and, you know, all the things, and he's still just questioning, very questioning mind, the Roman, but, but uh, then a leper comes and they're beating this leper, some people, and throwing him on the ground and everything, and Jesus stops, goes over, and just and totally loves the leper, strokes him, embraces and, and the face and everything just is like this, and then as the leper gets up and turns back, the, the face is made whole, the hands are made whole. Mm. A very powerful scene. And then the same laughing apostle uh, turns and looks at the, the Roman man, and he goes, it was like, um, that's what I'm talking about. Because mm. he actually got to witness uh, what the apostles had witnessed for three years. Mm. He said, that's what I'm talking about. You know, <laughs> with the biggest smile on his face, like, you aren't going to believe this. Mm. And that's the same Christ energy that we all have, the, the Christ presence that can heal the sick, raise the dead. For, you, for those of you that read the Course, I think that's uh, miracle principle number 23. You can heal the sick and raise the dead because you made sickness and death and can abolish them both. You can abolish depression, um, addiction, all kinds of envy, fear, jealousy, greed, you know, all the emotions, but also sickness and death as well, uh, because there's no order of difficulty in miracles. 
So this is really the good news, and, and this is more bringing what's the presence that was there underneath the Gospels really fully into awareness. Mm. And that's really what our function is as miracle workers, is to live it, to breathe it, to walk it, to extend it in everything we think and say and do, without exception. And so literally, if, if any of you are wondering what this is about, it's like, yeah, it's Jesus saying, I'm calling you out of the world. I'm calling you out of the mm -hmm. world of linear time. I'm calling you out of the world of pain, sickness, suffering, and, and death into eternal life. And I don't know about you, but there's just nothing more important than eternal life. And when I get into that experience of the present moment, the holy instant, where I get into revelatory experiences, then I, it's just a confirmation that it's all true. Mm. Just absolutely all true. And I always felt that that three days pause in the story of Jesus between between being put in the tomb and the seeming first vi witness of the resurrection was that, what do you want? Full transfer of training, what do you want? What world do you want to see? And then it was, that was, it was like a decision in the mind that we've been offered in every moment. What do you want to see? What are you looking for now? Yeah. And and I always felt that rather than being like a test of faith, so much as it was just the invitation into, into the looking. And within this book too, the watch parables yeah. have always very much appealed to me because I always wondered in Gethsemane and that you know, will you not watch with me? Mm -hmm. You know, some versions make it sound like Jesus is somewhat tragic and 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 they're not able to watch with him, whereas it's like, will you watch with me? And it's every moment, will you watch with me? Yeah. Now. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I see this great transfer now. I've never thought about that, but I do remember that scene from the from the Bible and from the some of the movies about, and, and it kind of spins it as if as if Jesus is going through a temptation. He's certainly not being tempted there in the garden because he's three years prior to that he's he's accepted the resurrection, the atonement of the mind, but um, how they all sleep. And it, that's like in our movie Dark City, sleep, mm -hmm. sleep, you know, there, he's just saying, be vigilant for God and his kingdom. He's, it's the third lesson of the Holy Spirit in the Course, mm -hmm. and that's what he was really calling everybody to, and, and they couldn't stay awake. Um, it's more, I think, to the resistance, um, probably in their minds, like they could feel, everyone kind of knows ultimately what's coming, and, and some of those scenes mm -hmm. that would come you know, in, in the days that would follow with the arrest and the trial and mm. the walking through the, you know, the carrying a cross and then the crucifixion scene, those are scenes that, uh, you know, as adoring as the apostles were of Jesus, that, that would be hard for anybody. Mm. It would be hard for, for you to watch those kind of scenes with a, with a best friend, with a, a, a husband, a wife, a mother, a father, a child. Anyone going through those kind of things it would be, uh, you know, there would be resistance. And I think, mm. you know, everybody was kind of aware that the time had come for some pretty heavy duty seeming scenes, mm. and they just were, would rather sleep right. <laughs> and not have it, it in direct contact. Mm. And that's what happens with dreams. Things mm. that you're too f afraid to face during the daytime dreams, sometimes you face, face them at night, in, in nightmares and night terrors. You know, when you give yourself permission to dream them up in that form and face them in that mm. way. I think that's another thing I really like about this book is that it's in bite-sized pieces. I feel it's like a prayer meditation book. You you come to a piece and you have the Bible quote that is the is a, has an equivalent or or is is further expanded upon with the course quote, and that's it. Your mind, everything, the spirit is speaking to you for the rest of it. What you know, what you previously thought of that quote, what you previously understood from even that sentiment, and how it applies to you instantly, you there's a meditation that's occurring, and really it's not about reading a linear book at all, but it's about like dropping into an experience, that and and in this bite-sized way that you could randomly open it and see what the spirit is you know calling you deeper into because each one is like a very deep portal call, yes. because yes. it's so clear, it's unequivocal, yeah. it's so clear. Yeah. It's what Sarah's describing, you know, it's like uh, when, when this book is published this month, um, The Mystical Teachings of Jesus, it would be something you could like curl up with, like a, a companion book. It's much smaller than the Course, mm. but it takes you right in with the questions and then takes you right in with the Gospels. 
and and different parts of the Bible actually uh, as well, and and then right into the course and right into that portal of mm -hmm. deep experience. So you may be thinking, well, I've got these jobs and I've got my career and I've got my life and this and this. This is the kind of book you want to curl up with to go away, go camping, go off to a motel, go off mm -hmm. somewhere where you don't have any distractions, turn your cell phone off, uh, and give yourself this intimacy with with the presence and just dive into it. Uh, you won't come back the same. Uh, you won't come back to face the world in the same state of mind or, or as the same person. You'll, it'll be such a, a turn. And and as I always tell people with this, with all of this, your life will never be the same. None of us have a clue uh, how we're going to be used. None of us even saw ourselves doing some of the <laughs> things we're doing. You know, I, I certainly didn't see any of this or forecast any of it. But it's really glorious, and I think it takes time to, to almost like a time out from the distractions and struggles of the world mm. into this nurturing, deep, penetrating experience that, mm -hmm. that changes your mind forever. And, and we had a question yesterday about coming into, you know, purpose and whether purpose came after you get things fixed and tidied up or it came before. And as I was listening to it, I mean, I really felt that feeling of purpose is like the tractor beam. So stepping into purpose is being in the miracle for all of the answers and how everything then unravels and unfolds. So this is first. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you step into this first because the you know, the joy and the exuberance that you feel because you already have an attraction to it. So you just, yeah. you step into where the attraction is, whether it's this book or this YouTube or this show, and you just step into that and let that take you into the experience. And then it, from that space, everything else becomes obvious of what's helpful and what falls away. And all you, you do is allow your hands to be soft and not be trying to grab things back. It just starts, to, I, my experience is it naturally yeah. starts rolling, literally rolling from there. And um, But, you know, there's nothing to be afraid of. From my experiences so far, the, 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 the fear was just a clenched thought that there would be something. And I, I can guarantee from my experience so far, there was nothing mm -hmm. I didn't want coming for me at all, yeah. actually. Yeah. It's like the key is your willingness. If you've just got that key in your hand, you know, you can literally reach around and, and open the gate. And then uh, your willingness like takes you on this ride, on this inward journey. It's not so much things or stuff or people, places, things. Even books are just reflections of this little key of willingness. Mm. But if you've got it, then use it. And then when you use it, it's like, whoa, what? What have I been missing? Mm. Uh, what What am I beholding? You know, it's just spectacular. It's like, take me away. You just feel like you're lifted up and you just want to give way to the light mm. and go all the way with it. Mm. Quite miraculous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Would you like to open up for questions or have a song or do you have a few? Maybe we could just see if anybody has anything on your heart or anything that you'd like to, to share or to ask. See if anybody feels that. Okay. Okay, Dave. Dave. Eric's getting things uh, situated here. You can pause one second. We're just getting your mic turned up. Go ahead, Dave. Okay. Go ahead. Is there now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the experience that you're sharing, a lot of the realizations that you had are ones that I've had. The resurrection was far, <clears throat> far earlier than all of the way it was portrayed in the Bible and stuff. I'm trying to, things are shaping up where I was, can come out and do a devotional retreat with you. And I, things are starting to unfold for that. I thought it was impossible and things are starting to happen. And 
know, before I didn't keep doing what's in front of me to do, it's just starting to happen. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. It's opening up. That your willingness is, is uh, helping ignite the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'll get back in contact with Susan about any kind of upcoming retreats or stays. I mean, see how it unfolds. So these have been a lifeline for me. It's been wonderful joining with you here. I was getting into a little made up pure thoughts <laughs> before this, and I stopped and prayed and meditated and sat down with you. And I just want to express my gratitude again. This, I'm so grateful. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Thank Dave. Thank you, Dave. It does feel like a lifeline. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. very much like a lifeline. We had a friend earlier who was saying that he was he felt like something was bubbling in his heart. I'm not sure if he's still with us or feeling to share right now, but just if somebody has anything that's really sparkling on their heart, they're just so welcome just to share it here, just knowing it serves for, for all. Candy, raised your hand. Okay. Hey, Candy. Oh, hi. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning. Um, I, I'm today, my lesson today from the workbook is uh, I give the miracles I have received. And um, I think I understand it, but I'm not sure. So I'm wondering if, uh, David, maybe you could uh, say something about that. Uh, I think that sometimes. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's Jesus, sorry, Jesus calling. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm very sorry. Yeah, you it's can. Okay. We, it's okay. we can pause. We can pause. Yeah. We'll mm -hmm. let her go. Candy go back. <laughs> it's probably Jesus on the other end anyway, That's it. so she'll come back. Oh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's beautiful. It. It's very spontaneous, but I think it starts with that, just the willingness to be used. Uh, just the prayer of the heart, you know, use me, um, guide me. Uh, that that's that's kind of feeling is where where it all starts, and uh, and then yeah, it's it, it it can be very very spontaneous. I know even for me, this I'm just in a very spontaneous year and. I was just sharing with Sarah that there's a couple of gatherings that look like they're mm -hmm. coming coming around the bend here in Australia, uh, down near Melbourne and over up near Sydney, and then yeah, you know, there's so many things just that just open and open up, but not that we have to know them in advance. And I think that's the part about um, I give the miracles I have received that it does remind me that we, we have to be receivers first, because the miracles are always for us, they're for our mind. They're not for anybody else. It just seems like we extend them to other people, and that other people are involved, but, but the messenger always receives the message first for himself, and then, and then gives it, and extends it. And that gets away from looking for outcomes too, because when you allow yourself to be used in that way, you feel connected and joyful, mm -hmm. and your eyes aren't looking around to see how did it go, or you how did know, it go down? <laughs> how did it go down? You're not. There's not even a thought about that. It's just you're swept away in the the joy. Mm. So that's beautiful. Yeah, if, if you have friends that are in Melbourne, we we've just gotten word that on the twentieth um, of March that you'll be in Melbourne, and then in Sydney, um, it's on the twenty sixth. So more mm -hmm. dates unfolding there, but it's fun just watching things just come towards us. Yeah. Uh, and the Freedom Retreat as well, actually, yeah. in, in June. And that sounds like a lot of fun up in the Rockies and Estes Park there. Yeah. Yeah, that's from the 16th to 19th, so. Yeah, in the Melbourne area, it's kind of, it's actually Mornington Peninsula, which is a bit of a drive um, south. It's quite a drive, but um, it's that's the area, that's the airport I'm coming into. And, okay, you and fly and right the, into the gallery. I, <laughs> and then I go down to Mornington. I, actually, I, it'll be a transport afterwards. Uh, mm. After many flights from Guadalajara to Los Angeles to... So, yeah, I might even see some of you in L.A. Uh, as a 14-hour layover there ah. and have some miracles <laughs> Ooh, and look at the left so forth. Going, and, and then get back on the plane, go all the way to Sydney, then uh, rest a few hours, three or four, then, then down to Melbourne and then rest up and start the start the tour down there yeah i mean i we've had some friends come to stay with us now who seem to have actually come off this lm virtual screen mm. so literally okay. the people who are with <laughs> us now have actually previously seemed to be this side of the 
a seeming mirage. And what's really interesting is um, they were like, oh, you really don't prepare these shows, do you? Like, I'm sitting here and they're like, do you think David's coming? And we're like, we don't know. <laughs> we're just <laughs> going to be here. And, and that's what you're talking about. Like, there isn't... Yeah. You're just yeah. available to be in that miracle because you're in it first yourself. You received that call yeah. and answered it all in one moment. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's. I mean, it's even to try to describe it. It's. It's more like, um, like you get into this involuntary flow, and it's like your, your life as you know it isn't the same. It's got more of a surreal feeling, and it's like, it's more like the body's like a puppet, but things just seem to happen, and you're aware that it's all perfect but it's it's not a lot of efforting there's just no efforting with it it's because all we are doing is really showing up with willingness to the spirit to mm -hmm. do it through us and there's even a course quote that says it cannot be difficult to do the task that Christ appointed you to do for it is he who does it so that's a, it's a beautiful line of being humbling. done through and again, it's it's something that's it's until you experience it, then it it sounds a little bit like I don't know, like you're like you're taken over or something, but in a good way, <laughs> you know. It's this isn't the invasion of the body snatchers or some of those movies that you know that we have in the past. This is really a, a good a good thing. In fact, when I even watch those movies now, people will have me watch different versions of like in, invasions of the body snatchers, and I'm just. I think it's almost like a comedy because uh, the the ego is afraid of being taken over. So I'm cheering on <laughs> the invisible force that's taking over the bodies, and then when the bodies, the, the crime goes down, all kinds of things go down, and the, and the, the some of the people are freaking like there's this invisible yeah. force that's calm and serene that's taking over. And the whole society is being transformed. And I'm thinking, this is a transformational movie. This, this belongs <laughs> in my movie watcher's guide. Sometimes people have watched the movie with it. They're like horrified, you know, watching the same thing. But it's, they're watching it from upside down perception. And I'm just loving it and thinking, I've got to rename the movie or something. Because to mm. me, this is like the, the coming of Christ. And they're calling it the invasion of the body snatchers. So, <laughs> you know, those are the two perspectives. Yeah, the, I, I think the one with Saoirse Ronan in it, um, I can't, can't recall the name of it right now, um, where that's what seems to happen with her and their eyes all go blue, is really good because it's like, am host. I host? Yes. Am I supposed to fight this or not? You know, and here <laughs> I am, I've got a, this l wonderful Irish girl in the role, and like, am I supposed to? Is there? Am I supposed to have an opinion on this? Is there any way in which I'm supposed to fight this? Am I supposed yeah. to maintain something? Again, who am I? What am I trying to maintain here? And for myself right now, like this is this is what I join with Lisa with on a daily basis. Like, is that is that another bit that you let go? Is there is there anything I'm supposed to, to maintain or hold? And she goes, No, it's all Sarah. You can just let it all go. It's just Sarah. And yeah. I'm like, Okay, so, yeah. You know, yeah. be well. I mean, taken over by joy mm -hmm. is the invitation. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. The, the the original invasion of the body snatchers kind of had this this thing that would kind of move under the dirt or something, which looked you know, for most people it was a little creepy, but then they made one, I think it was just called Invasion or something, they left the body snatcher part out of it, but th that was a completely invisible force. Right. And everybody became so serene and peaceful um, after they, they they weren't dramatic, they weren't screaming, shouting, <laughs> crime, fighting and everything. So to me that was the one where I just, mm. I, I had to pause the movie a few times and people were going, <laughs> oh my God, like are you... What are you, where are you taking this with this stuff? But I think that's what happens with the mind training too. We talk a lot about mind training and that you know you can't just click your fingers or click your heels. Uh, if you have the power of prayer, really, if you really gave it all you've got and held nothing back with the power of prayer, you could click your fingers or click your heels. But for most people, most people are given a slowly evolving curriculum where you just have to to keep at it and to keep faithful and keep practicing and do the mind watching and do the mind training. So that's why we have all these great tools mm. for it. And then occasionally, you know, you meet someone who's just there and and then whoa, it's it's a kind of a almost like a transmission or something very direct like that movie of people mm. meeting Jesus for mm. this uh, Roman man. He you know, that was very transformative. Mm. 
Yeah, I, 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 when I was on that tour, when I was in um, in England, and I had come with you, and we, you had been t- talking at the conference in London, um, which was beautiful, um, what you shared there. I happened to go down and visit friends then that were um, Bridget, and I was down staying at a, a very, what is a really well-renowned place. It's... Um, Glastonbury oh, yeah. and I was in Glastonbury and it was like a wet Wednesday afternoon in Glastonbury it didn't seem very spiritual or anything and I was just walking around just 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 open really and I I literally experienced I just this there was this man standing all dressed in white with a turban and he was like at least a hundred yards away and I just literally got I just locked eyes with him even at that huge distance and I had this amazing experience of just I was just really open and I, I don't know, I couldn't quantify what or what it was except that was the only reason I was in Glastonbury for the afternoon. For the whole thing. For, for that. the whole thing. And it was so amazing, just that. And, you know, I, I feel it's just this, you know, there's like some kind of a safety that comes in the mind and there's a receptivity and it's not a specialness with anything. But if, if, you're, if you're looking and open, then everything can be truly helpful. I found this book truly helpful. I found all of my joinings with you and all of your YouTubes truly helpful. And it's just, you know, it's kind of, if you come with that presence and that openness and that, I don't know, it's, I, know I haven't got the right word, like, um, like a sanctity or a kind of um, a reverence. If you mm-hmm. come with that reverence, then your whole world can shift into this like more like fairy tale style you're talking about but there's a grace within it and a dignity that I never had as a personal self in the world there's a dignity mm. there's something that's being carried and is carrying my experience of myself that is beyond me yeah yeah mm. yeah I know uh, Sarah's had some just amazing mystical experiences and I do remember that joining we were over there too because I think at one point, too, uh, maybe we were to meet, was it Manchester or some mm. part of England, and, and you just kind of were able to find a ride at the last second and, mm. and get there and just kind of wait outside the doors, and then the doors opened, and, and Ian and his mm. assistant said, oh, come on in. And and it reminds me a lot of that, that uh, woman, Susie, who was over with me in, in China. She was a very simple woman. I just had a, a Skype type chat with her this morning actually in China but she would uh, she had no money for any of the the gatherings but she would just come and and pray and and he, you know here go just go and stand there and so she would just stand out of the outside of the gathering and someone would just inevitably walk up oh can I help you mm. oh do you need money to go in here take this you know it's seven out of seven times she came to seven of my gatherings mm. she didn't have the resources uh, to get in for her what the organizer had put a price or whatever, and seven out of seven times she came in. But that's what we're talking about, the willingness. If if you're going to give your life, mm. your soul, your heart to spirit to use, everything is going to click in. I mean, absolutely everything without exception. And that just goes against all of our past learning, all of our programming, all of our conditioning that goes, oh, come on, this is not a fairy tale. But but it does seem like a an inspired, not a grim fairy tale, but no, no but grims. an actual <laughs> f- inspired fairy tale when we just go, okay, I'm giving it over, and it, it actually works. And there's an experience of instant receiving of everything in that giving over of what looked like my so-called life. Like there was this instant receiving of, of yeah, like instantaneous it's not even like it has to seem to play out over time there's in that handing over there's everything is received in that moment too yeah. so yeah. Yeah. every every time there seems to be that opportunity to leap once more or you know in if there's a thought that something's held back then that grace again just pours through so yeah. it becomes everything yeah yeah, we're actually this week we're receiving a man from Portugal, uh, mm-hmm. Rafael. He he's contacted me. He contacted me a number of times. I put him in touch with Jenny. Jenny had just completed this whole experience with a large group over many weeks at Diva. The place had emptied out. She was the last one there, and uh, Rafael said, "Could I come and spend a little time with you?" So they had some one-on-one time and. 
he recently contacted me because he's losing losing all of his five senses, 23 years old, going from mystical experiences into pain experiences, mystical pain, and not, he was just like, please, just I just need to know that love will not abandon me. As he was, it's, it was mm. getting quite extreme, and and here it is through miracles upon miracles of me talking to Kirsten and then Suzanne and all these different ones involved. He's, I think, if he can make it across on the plane, we'll, pick him, we'll on pick him up at the, <laughs> at the airport. And uh, this 23-year-old who's losing all of his five senses. Um, Kirsten was working with him too about how, oh, that's just a sensitivity phase. Don't worry, you, you, there's more miracles coming, and you mm. know it doesn't it doesn't end. Uh, in like mystical pain, mystical pain, you go more over into the beatific, into mm -hmm. the beautiful, and so um, yeah, we're welcoming him in to the monastery. So uh, it's joyful for us. Yeah. It, no, he had nowhere else to go in the world, and even his parents were just praying and praying and praying and praying, like, please, God, there's got to be something, something, someone, somewhere, something. You know, and uh, yeah, and then the spirit works it out. You know, I was amazed he could string some words together because he was. <laughs> at times he can't string sentences yeah. together. He said, "There's times I start to lose. I can't listen to your speakers. I can't watch your videos. Ah, <laughs> you know, it's like I'm going into the, into the shutdown. But um, yeah, it, it's the devotion, the torch of devotion. I feel his heart underneath there. Yeah." And then there's there's a stabilizing factor that comes when you have those around you who that's not dramatic to them. Yeah. It's somehow instantly everything normalizes again. Yeah. There's a new sense of what normal is as in, or natural to yes. you. And therefore, uh, um, then the, you can be done through again. Yeah. So it's not not be about becoming incapacitated it, because the, the spirit's active through you. So it's not whether the body is quiet or moving. But, yeah. It yeah. all falls away. Yeah, and that's, I always found that very, uh, gave me a great sense of security in myself for just having those that would look at you and go, uh-huh, yeah. you know, and it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and do you want toast? <laughs> so it's just, you know, here we go, and, and yeah. it's very it's simple. Yes. It kept very simple. Yeah. I'm wondering about Candy, uh, is Candy, are you still there? We, I, I. I didn't know if Jesus talked to you and shared it all on the phone or, or whether I can be of service here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Sorry about the interruption. Um, my question is uh, around miracles. Um, my lesson for today is basically um, I give the miracles I have received. And um, I guess my mind is having a bit of a hard time wrapping itself around the concept of a miracle. It says here, Christ's vision is the miracle in which all miracles are born. And then later on, it says, Christ beholds no sin in anyone, and in his sight the sinless are as one. Uh, Christ's vision is the bridge between the worlds, and in its power can you safely trust to carry you from this world into one made holy by forgiveness. So while practicing this lesson, I guess like always, um, I'm wondering what it is that I have to do. Um, I can understand that Christ's vision is a miracle, um, but how how do I share that? Uh, if I've received it, why am I not aware that I have received it, and how do I share that with others? It seems like it's a task I'm being given, and I don't know how to do it. <laughs> mm, yeah. Yeah, I can certainly relate. I know that I, I felt that way too at the beginning of working with the Course and uh, and uh, that prayer at the beginning of the book. It's on, I think, 24 on the first edition and uh, 28 on the second, third, and fourth editions, that I am here only to be truly helpful prayer. Uh, it's funny, I've, I've used that prayer so much. I used it when I it was clueless. I said, I don't know how to share miracles. I don't even know what this means. I would read through 50 principles of miracles at the beginning and go, wow, that's that's amazing, but it, I don't know if I can relate to that at the beginning. I was a bit 
overwhelmed of thinking a miracle worker. No, I've never prepared for such a thing. My parents never, you know, they were Christians, but they never said over dinner, you know, you, you'll go through confirmation and Sunday school and this and this, and you'll be a good miracle worker, David. You know, it, it was like, no, get out and get a job and, and earn some money, you know, and, for, you know, that was just more like a ritual. Church was more like a ritual. So, it's funny because I was just having, I mentioned having uh, lunch with Judy Scutch and her husband and, and some others, and and um, she was saying to me that that, that prayer, which was my lifesaver, it, it got me going, um, what you're asking, that really got me going. She said that was not originally in, in the Course at all. And I said, what? So here I go, I go through the whole book, one of the most important <laughs> prayers. Uh, and she says, no, that wasn't part of the Course. And I said, well, what was it? And it was, uh, Bill Thedford uh, was going to speak at a conference. And uh, I don't know if you know the story of Bill, he's one of the first two students mm -hmm. of, of the Course, but he helped soothe Helen Shuckman, but he was a, per Jesus called him a professor afraid of professing. Because here he was, he, he put himself as the head of the department at this um, Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center, but he hated to teach in the classroom. He was in a, he, he put himself in administrative positions because he was so afraid of speaking. And here he had a speaking engagement and he was so nervous about going in front of a crowd and speaking because one of the things he hated to do. And so through Helen, Jesus gave him that prayer. I am here only to be truly helpful. I am here to represent him who sent me. And so I, now, all these years later, I've been with the Course for 30 years, and now I find out it wasn't even part of the book. It, it got inserted in there uh, from from Bill. Again, though, it was a practical thing. He he was just like you. He he didn't know what to do. Uh, and and so that was given as a very practical way to to set his mind in alignment to just show up with whatever, even the day, as you wake up in the day. And I found myself praying that and memorizing that and, and having that roll through my mind and it was so helpful, so practical. And then another thing, Jesus used puns and everything with Bill because he, he liked to play on words and whatever, but at one point um, Bill wanted something that was even shorter than that. He wanted something that was extremely short, that he like really effective, almost like like a finger on your hand. It's so close and so short, like your baby finger. And so that whole prayer of "I'm here to be, only be truly helpful," which is, you know, quite a number of sentences, got shortened down to. Jesus said, "Here, Helen, give this to Bill," and this was the entire prayer. And you can use this one too, because I love it. And the whole prayer is. Here I am, Lord. <laughs> That's it. And so, that is so simple. My gosh, I can remember that. Uh, here I am, Lord. What it is, is it's orienting your mind to be useful and to be shown the power that's within you, to be shown the miracles that can come through you and be performed through you, just from orienting your mind and and taking it away from fear, because miracles can never be performed in, in the spirit of doubt or fear. But that here, am I, here I am, Lord, that was, uh, it's got to be the most potent short prayer in mm. history. And, it, and it's so effective. So, I think that's what I would do. Uh, pick something that really resonates with you and, and that you can really embrace and then uh, just watch what happens from there. It, it, it just goes stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. So, if I understand this correctly, the miracle actually is that we're in a state of mind in which what we perceive is basically what Christ perceives, the vision that Christ has. So, when we look at a situation or, or, or consider the situation we're in or we're seeing someone, we're not seeing the negative stuff or the positive stuff, we're just seeing truth, the light, basically. Yes, um, it, that's it's, what a miracle is. Yeah, the miracle, the miracle is more like a means, and and Christ's vision or uh, revelation or the great rays, whatever you want to call it. Those are all synonyms for the same thing. The, yeah, the 
the light is non-perceptual, so you, it's almost like if you took all the shadows away, like if you were in a movie theater and you had this powerful light in a projector, and it was projecting through the film uh, the shadows that we see as like everyday life on the screen. It's that light that's in the projector, that's the Christ vision. And so, as we're willing to move in that direction, miracles kind of cleanse our mind, they kind of cleanse the film. They, they wash away the shadows, and some of us have actually, back in the old days of those old movie theaters, where you're in there and sometimes the film burns or, or snaps. Sometimes it would actually snap or burn, and then the whole screen would go to light. Yes. That's that's like piercing into what we could call Christ vision. So that's underneath it all. That's that's what that's what inspires the miracles is the Christ vision. And then miracles are quite interpersonal. Um uh, they're still perceptual. So um you know, there's so many miracles that will come into your life. Um some people some of you know uh like uh, Wayne Dyer and Deepak uh, got into Sai Baba there for a while, and Sai Baba would always manifest jewelry, uh, rings, people, followers. I had a friend of mine who was in a library one time in Indiana, and she was just praying and sitting there and reading the Sai Baba book, and she was just so filled up with love reading about it. And um, she got up, to get a sandwich and she came back and then there was a, a bracelet, a beautiful bracelet that had manifested right on the book. Uh, so Baba did, a, did a, a, a bracelet for her, right? And she's like, she thought, who did that? And you know, she's looking around for somebody who's pulling her leg or somebody that she knew. She scoured the whole uh, place, the bookstore or library, wherever she was, and, she, and there was nobody. She just was, she was telling me that. but. You know that there it's not necessarily that, but that's just like a symbol of something that's an out of pattern way of looking at the world where you have this lightness in your heart and you don't take anything seriously in the world. you're in such lightness, and that perception will lead you back to Christ's vision, uh which is so so don't you know tr try to say why didn't the world disappear this morning or you know <laughs> why why is there still a curtain and still the rug and a, and a carpet, you know. It's like, don't try to push the Christ vision. Just know that you'll be used and, and it'll cleanse your perception and take you towards that, that vision. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Candy. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think Tamara wrote on the chat, I don't know if you saw it, but she wanted to speak, ask a question as well. Okay. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. again so Thank much. you. Thank you, Candy. Eric's finding you tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> He's activating your microphone. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. I'm, uh, I'm, it's so funny because right now the question I have, I'm doing it at the same time. I want to go, do we have time? Um, but anyway... This program is so delicious. Um, <laughs> so I know one of the things that uh, y'all practice in Camus is the no people pleasing thing. And I'm really realizing as this program is unfolding, because I'm actually at work right now and the client is asleep. And um, what I want is to be truly helpful. What I want is to lead a 100% spirit-directed life. And this people-pleasing thing, you know, there's, um, I'm kind of just the, the tool in this whole system of the work I do. I'm a sober companion. And so there's this whole team of people that has their agenda and things they want me to be accomplishing throughout the day with the client. And, um, it's really bumming my gig, man. <laughs> mm. Like I just want to just be in that space of, of love and and following what the next prompt is and and finding that easier and easier in my life. I mean, I'm uh, everything's coming together. I'm about to come to Camus and everything's been unfolding so beautifully. But 
it just seems like there's a level of trust that is required when it comes to like the secular world of just going, I'm just going to keep trusting spirit as the ultimate boss, <laughs> like the ultimate boss, uh, rather than trying to people please in all these, you know, there's just so many agenda. or it seems like there's so many agendas and, um, yeah, could you just, I don't know if I really formed that into a real question, but if anything came up for you to talk about it, I would really appreciate it. Yeah, I think the because we're so focused on purpose and, and because that mind training has been such a, a central point, it's been the focal point of everything, that um, it does, you start to see perception merging and blending together and what, what seem to be all these different factions and people to please and agendas, it's with this single, let thine eye be single, uh, when your desire is single, when, when your focus is single, when you have one intent, um, and it's become so strong, what you will becomes the will of God, then then that, that will unify perception, and that's where the peace comes in. So, yeah, I know it's, you know, it's been a big step for you. It was a big step coming here when you were here before, and and I'm sure you have had all kinds of contrast experiences, and you might chalk this up to, okay, here's some more contrast experiences. But for me, when I would have those contrast experiences, I would want to more, even more than ever, get aligned with the my instructor within, my the boss, the, the one who's in charge of the plan of atonement. You know, like I, my heart would be burning for that, uh, because I would just be like, like Bill Thetford, there has to be a better way than trying to juggle all these uh, different per perceptions and encounters, you know, to not upset anybody, to try to smooth things over, and it gets fatiguing. It's just extremely fatiguing. And yet, for me, there was this sharp contrast where, you know, I just finally said, okay, here, here I am, Lord, there's that prayer. I've heard of your coming, I just got to see you when I was in Southern California, I think I heard maybe yesterday uh, Michael at the monastery is so looking forward to you coming. Uh, I feel like when you come uh, and join in in the purpose, there it, it's like it really directs the mind, it like channels the mind in a very helpful direction, and uh, just you, get, you have such an appreciation for those heart-to-heart -heart contacts you know, where words are even purposeful, hugs are purposeful, gazing in someone's eyes is extremely purposeful, and uh, I think you'll just be naturally drawn in to what uh, is very intuitive for you, what feels very, very natural. Almost like, uh, like letting your heart free, letting it soar a bit and fly, and, and saying, oh yeah, this feels really good, and then you you have even more strength, you know, you, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, I, I knew this, always I knew this, um, and here I come, I'm just, I'm coming into it. It just, it strengthens. Uh, through supportive, nurturing relationships too, you know, that's what relationships are for. We're here to heal and bless. We're here to nurture. We're not here to get something from each other. You know, that's the ego with all this getting motive. Uh, and that's part of a, an old conditioning of being human getters mm -hmm. instead of human beings. Uh, what did you get today? How much did you earn? Did you earn your worth? And, you know, all this uh, trying to prove worthiness, and it's crazy. It's, it's an absolute insane uh, belief system. And yet, when we, when we slide into what feels more natural to us, it's like, oh, we can breathe again. We can breathe with a sigh. We, we can breathe easy, instead of a, a hard breath of, of trying to strive and struggle. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think you're just coming, just keep, keep your faith and keep coming in the direction you're coming in, and everything will open up, you know, the, the, the waters will part, whatever uh, obstacles are in the way will start to clear away as you give yourself over to this, and, and that's just the way that that the spirit works, you know, and it's very loving. It's very loving. 
Yes, it is. It's been amazing. I just like watching all these little things I thought were insurmountable be just handled. It's just amazing. Hmm. My heart is just soaring right now. It feels so free. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. And and yet still doubts and you know there there's still once in a while a dagger will get thrown like what are you thinking? <laughs> 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Sarah was talking about the ones that go from the virtual and then they come. Yeah, right yeah. Like I'm watching the them screen. <laughs> come out through the screen. You're too. another one. <laughs> yeah. Popping off the screen here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, look! It's a tamara-shaped hug. <laughs> I just, I just feel all this uh, gratitude because you're, you're in service in this moment. Like we're all in service in this moment, and all I kept hearing was, "Give it away, give it all away, give all of your love away, give all of the grace, give all of of the appreciation that you're, you're sharing about us and 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 this experience that seems to be in the future coming now in this moment. You're in your bedroom." at the monastery here your mighty companion is in the next room sleeping give it all away give it all away it's mm-hmm. just now so yeah, yeah thank you yeah. <laughs> beautiful thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Hmm. well been another beautiful episode <laughs> of Awaken sure the Heart. <laughs> it sure has. And we are off now down to the printers, Alexander's, to go look at the proof of our new book, uh, The Mystical Teachings of Jesus. So that's very exciting. And again, just deep, deep gratitude for everyone who's joined us on Periscope and everyone who's joined us on Zoom. And if you would like to, again, go to livingmiracles.org forward slash LM hyphen virtual <laughs> and that's and that's that's where you'll find all these beautiful shows and to my guest david hoffmeister thank you very mm, much from the bottom of you, my heart thank you thank you thank you all for coming mm. big hug big kiss <laughs> love 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 <laughs>